Okay, so hi. So um, this is a bit of a series we've got until we start to get much more information uh, about Legion. First point to note is this is 100% speculation. Uh, if you want to know what we already know about Legion, um, I've already done a couple of videos on that. You can find the links there. Um, and until BlizzCon comes out, which is not that far away now, so we get some more information, this is just talking about in terms of what we know they want to do, how they might do it. All right, so I've already talked about a couple of things. Uh, so today what I want to talk about is the what to do. Um, the biggest thing that Waterlords of Drenor has been attacked about is nothing to do. Now, that has got to be something Blizzard's got to tackle. They know that. They know that. Uh, so it's just a case of a couple of things maybe they could do for that. Now, let's just analyze what they need to do. First of all, they need regular content to keep pe people feeling that they need, they've got things to do. It has to be regular. It has to be self-sustaining. Now, we can't expect developers to bring out a content patch every month. Um, whereas the problem is <laughs> that with the way it works out in Warlords of Drenor, a lot of players, especially ones who are not going to go into the hard mode of raiding or even sort of semi-hard modes of raiding, you could consume the content fairly quickly. I mean, when the expansion first came out, probably maybe it was a couple of months. Some people might have done what they wanted to do in one month. Probably a couple of months at most. And then you wouldn't need to have really done anything until BlackRock Foundry came out and maybe do that on Lucky for Aid. And of course, they tried to stagger it, but it's not really fooling many people. In fact, the canny people might have just waited until all the wings were released, then start to resub, do the BlackRock Foundry for a few weeks, and then unsub again, wait for Hellfire Citadel. So the actual content for for some for a lot of casual players probably is not enough that you know the Apexis dailies do me a favour. Tanan jungle stuff, you know, it's not it doesn't even take that long to get yourself geared up if the gear is useful to you, the six nine five stuff. Which is higher level than the looking for raid, bear in mind. So in actual fact, um you probably just want to run the looking for raid once. And then you know, if you want the legendary in okay, you keep going doing that for a bit of a few weeks um, and then you've done it again you've absolutely done so what Blizzard needs to do is to, to create content that's self-sustaining but still feels different enough or rewarding enough for people to keep doing every now and then just do every now and then um, now for my money one of the problems Blizzard have created is because of their own brilliance in creating quality for life situations now compare now and vanilla I know people are always sick of these comparisons but just in terms of the quality of life so when it was time to go to a raid what do we do now what I personally do is I go through my portal to Tanan jungle uh, in my what's a mage tower what's it called for horde spirit lodge pop up there fly across to Hellfire Citadel I'm there in two minutes from my garrison which is where I naturally am Take vanilla. Now, let's say you wanted to go to Anixia's lair from Stormwind or Ironforge, most likely in Ironforge at that time. Um, so, what we do is we fly off to Menethil Harbour, it's not that far away. Get to the, the, the sort of jetty there, probably just in time to see the boat head off. So, oh, just got to wait for the next one now. Wait there, wait for the boat to arrive, several minutes, get onto the boat, wait for it to go to. Uh, Duswallow Dust Marsh. I'm trying to think of the name of the place there. Theramore. Uh, get off there. Ride across the water. Trying to dodge all those other things that'll snap at your heels. To the Wormbog and into Anixia's Lair. Several people probably find out they've forgotten to take their amulet, which is what you needed to gain access. So they have to teleport back and then get a summon back. Warlock's not happy. Costs, costs shards then. Not happy. Um, in fact, one fella... I remember while we were waiting for the boat, stood a bit too close to the edge. Bait, boat came along, knocked him into the water. He had to swim back. By the time he'd got back to the thing, the boat had buggered off. He, he was waiting. Um, so it took a certain amount of time just to get to raids. Dungeon, same thing. It took a certain amount of time for you to gather your group together. That could take half an hour. And then you've actually got to travel to the dungeon. And that took a lot longer than it would now, even for the, like, the challenge mode stuff where you have to travel there. Um, for those who haven't got the teleports and and all this so so the thing you wanted to do took a certain amount of time but even just getting there took a certain amount of time so the amount of time it took to do anything was a lot longer now we have a lot of quality of life stuff all right 
we can travel to things much more quickly. The actual traveling time is inconsequential. Um, so we're constantly just doing the content. It's like, I want to do this content, so I will quickly go over and do it. And it doesn't take that long to do the content, and I'm finished. And I think that doesn't help them <laughs> at all, because they've got to now have much more contact than, content than they ever needed before, because we're not spending any time doing the little things like traveling. Um, yeah, it wouldn't surprise me if they wanted to not knock flying on the edge just to do that, but uh, but there you go. So what sort of things could they do? So a couple of ideas, uh, I had, they're not really my ideas because these have been done in other games. Public quests, uh, or whatever you want to call them, but effectively random group objectives around the world. Now, you could think in terms of the bonus objectives of there being in WAD, but they're not always there and would take several people to complete. Now, part of that would have to, again, I'm going to refer to a game I've referred to in my Word of Warcraft this week, which is Elder Scrolls Online. Um, there's so many good things in that, you probably wonder why I don't actually play it, it's because it's, they got, you know, the ideas were great. <laughs> the execution was poor. Uh, it was released too early, it wasn't ready. I don't know whether it's ready now, but it certainly wasn't then. But you had these things, uh, anchor events, you know, at certain points around something just randomly would happen, you'd hear it, like this engine sound, and you'd go over there and there'd be like an invasion. You, that would absolutely time with Legion. You could just have these random parts of different zones, not just the main the high level zones, all the zones, where you have this event that is, is sparks off by a sound so that everyone in the zone can recognize it and get the word around that it's happening. And it's like an invasion of demons, you know, with in increasingly more powerful waves, just like in there. And, and again, a cooperative thing. Now, for that to work really well, again, one of the barriers to this sort of thing is people don't really work, work in groups. So you, 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 they are going to have to, if they're going to do this, just let us have open tag. Don't have a situation where someone tags a mob and it's only theirs. You have to be in their group to get a credit for it. Just have complete open tag on all mobs. That would help for so many things anyway. It would stop competition for mobs and all the rest of it. So I would definitely want that. But as I say, you could have this thing. And, 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 it, and then it pays people just to wander around the world for these events to just randomly happen. Uh, and, you, and you think, well, maybe people wouldn't want to do that. Well, I think they would, because the number of like rare spawn sites where you see people just camping them for so long, just to wait for a rare spawn to turn up, this is just someone sort of flying around doing their other thing. That if you know, preferably if there's other things around there that they want to do as well, like gathering or archaeology or something like that, um, and just get the word out, or or maybe they're just ready to go. Maybe they're just you're just in your city or whatever and you get the word someone in your guild says oh by the way i've been leveling this zone there's a demon invasion going on here so you get over to there really quickly that would work pretty well um and the other thing uh which which might work is, is actually from blizzard idea uh from diablo 3 which is adventure mode <laughs> and you think well, how do you actually tie that into world of warcraft because basically what you want is some repeatable content it has to be completable solo, but also the option to maybe have one or two friends as well. So maybe one to three players. And this might be a way to revive the old scenario system. Now, I wasn't keen on scenarios in WOD, but a lot of people were. So I was surprised that they didn't do them in WOD. But if, if you know, they could do them this way and give you the option, sort of scale so that you've got, you can either do it solo, maybe you get a couple of scripted NPCs that will muck in and help you out. Um, a bit like in the Proving Grounds, perhaps, where, you, you know, not the DPS one, but like, you know, the, the tanky one where you get a healer and things like that. Um, you know, maybe a couple of scripted NPCs that will fulfill roles that's not your normal role. And you could have like scenario type situation like that. Um, but the big thing for either of these, for both of these ideas, is, again, people are not just going to do it just because it's there. There has to be a reason. So what is that reason going to be? We know that gold rewards are not going to cut it because you have gold rewards in the dungeons and people are just not running the dungeons very often. Um, but again, you could you could pick on an idea from the time walking dungeons that they've got where you, you get a currency. Um, and I would do that. I would, you know, these events award, I mean, first of all, have them award some artifact power, of course, linking with the, the artifacts again. But also, certain amount of currency and there's vendors 
where you can trade this currency in and you, then you think about well, what sort of things could you do it for obviously there's the things like the cosmetic items you could have like pets or mouse which some people like not everyone is all into that though and of course you know after a certain amount of time you'll have exhausted that so ideally desirable consumables is what I would say if you're going to have a currency and you want this thing to run for the whole expansion and you want people to be doing it for the whole expansion what do we actually need it's a currency that allows you to get desirable consumables so desirable people want to do it consumable so you'll use them up and want more okay so it could be like costume type things with limited charges like we already have some of these like the Arthur's costume and things like that so you know a costume that people oh yeah I'd like that but it's got limited charges so once you've used them up you'll need to go and do some more of this content to get more of the currency to get to from off the vendor again it could be for crafted stuff you know um, give you a bit of a cover maybe you could get potions or flasks from it It'll presumably cost a significant amount to get all the flasks and potions you want we don't want to put alchemists out of business or gems or maybe even just crafted gear uh, like armor and weapons that you'd get that you'd be able to make as a blacksmith or something like that if a suitably large amount of this currency maybe you can just say okay well you can buy this thing that is ordinarily crafted by people um, there's all sorts of things you could actually have these vendors selling uh, that, that would give people a reason to do this content and then the content is effectively uh, like renewing because in the case of the sort of random objectives again it's just something just flying around the world and, and these events just occur uh, and you have enough sort of combinations of waves that make it feel a little bit different each time so it's not completely the same thing over time same with the adventure mode stuff sort of have so many scenarios um, that sort of change each day maybe you just do one a day or something like that rather than running them over and over again it's just a one a day thing perhaps a possibility but again just have a currency link to it so you got people encouraged to do it um, and especially for consumable stuff or crafted stuff that would be my idea that would be some way that to my mind wouldn't take a lot of development time and is something that in theory you can keep doing I mean it's still the sort of thing I wouldn't want them to not add to it halfway through the expansion I would still want them to add to it and create some new scenarios or new invasion points with different uh, mobs, invasion monsters and, and, and maybe named individuals or something like that. But to my mind that would at least have people having more things to do. And especially if you combine it with the things that I suggested for the dungeons. I think you're getting to a point where for a nominal outlay of, of development resources I think, you know, correct me if I'm wrong on this, I'm missing something out. But I think that would actually go a long way to giving people the, the regular content that they think is absent from Warlords Adrenal. Okay? Um, but anyway, that's my views. Uh, so comment below, see what you think. And until next time, see you later.